Right. Yes, I want to look at some of the basic things so we can start imagining life for people in those days. Is the screen clear? Can everybody see it clearly? I can turn more lights out if you need it. It's all right? Sure? Okay, then. So, Shakespeare lived kind of in the middle of our period from uh, 1564 to 1616, so that's more or less in the middle of the Tudor Stuart, Tudor Stuart period. And I want to think about what his life experience might have been. What kind of life did people have in those days? For example, what do you think? Did they have bicycles? I mean, it's a long time, be, you know, the Industrial Revolution, people that had steam trains and things, and, and that, that, that all happened uh, after Shakespeare, but the bicycle is a fairly simple piece of machinery. Did they have bicycles in those days? What do you think? Yes or no? Just put, put your answer. It's okay, don't worry, it's not a test or anything. What do you think? Okay. Did they have bicycles? Can you imagine William Shakespeare riding a bicycle? What about typewriters? How would William Shakespeare have written? Would he be, would he be writing his plays like this? Did they have typewriters? Okay, put down what you think. All right, and then we'll we'll look at the answers later on. What about guns? They've had guns. Okay. And compasses to find the direction, north, south. Would they have known about that? That a magnet would tell them where the north pole was? Would they have known about that back in Shakespeare's day? What do you think? And the printing press. It's a rather noisy printing, print, printing press. Would they have had that kind of machinery? What about electric lighting? Could they just walk into a room and turn the lights on in Shakespeare's day? Or in the streets, for example, would the streets be lit up at night? What about newspapers? Could they sit down and, you know, read the newspaper, find out what's going on in the world? Could that be William Shakespeare behind that newspaper? What do you think? Okay. What about tobacco? Could they smoke a cigarette or a pipe in Shakespeare's time? Is that a possible image, do you think? Okay. And how about tea? Famous English drink, tea, cup of tea. Could Shakespeare sit down and have a cup of tea? You know, when he was writing his plays, could he, could he relax with a cup of tea? With a biscuit, maybe? What do you think? Okay.
How about clocks? How do they tell the time in Shakespeare's day? Could, would Shakespeare just look at his wristwatch or... How would he know the time? Okay. First one, bicycles. No. Surprisingly, the bicycle wasn't invented until 1817, after the steam train, after uh, you know those big factories were made in the, in the late 18th century. After that, they made a bicycle. And it didn't have any pedals. First bicycles that they had in the 19th century, you just sort of pushed them along with your foot. <laughs> The first bicycle that was sort of a bit like our modern bicycle came along in, in 1867, which is quite a long time afterwards. All right, so the bicycle is surprisingly late in the kind of area of inventions and, and that sort of progress. Certainly, they didn't have them in Shakespeare's time. And the next one, what do you think? Again, the answer is no. A typewriter is also a 19th century invention, and it didn't come in until 1873. There were earlier prototypes, but the first one that actually went onto the market and was popular, people used it, was in 1873, and it looked like this. Okay? Shakespeare would have used a pen, a feather pen. Okay? The feather pen, the quill pen, this, this is what was used. Uh, even in the 19th century, Charles Dickens, famous writers in the 19th century, were also using this kind of quill pen to write their works. But this time, the next one here, yes, guns, they had. They didn't have bicycles, but they could kill each other. Bang, bang. All right. I think that says something about humanity. Uh, not a very good message either. But guns had been in use since the 14th century. They, were, they started, they tended to have these big things, you know, back in the medieval times. Uh, cannon. That's actually a 17th century cannon, but they'd had cannons since the, the Middle Ages. Chuseji Daikara. And uh, they were developing sort of smaller, you know, rifles and, and things like that in Shakespeare's time. Uh, these are 16th century pistols, for example. You know, they would have been around in Shakespeare's day. Okay. And again, the next one, uh, compasses, absolutely. Yes, the compass, had co it was something that had come from China, and it was what made possible the age of exploration. How did they get to America? In, you know, the Europeans, not the British as such, but the Europeans in uh, 1492, Christopher Columbus. But these navigational aids made it possible for ships to travel all around the world. And Sir Francis Drake was an Englishman. He was the first person to travel all around the world as the captain of a ship and come back alive. And of course, they used a compass. Compass was basic, of basic importance. Interestingly, you know, Japan, for example, no, that's why you know, Britain could make an empire because it made use of this technology. Japan was sort of, it was kinshi was not allowed to use compass. You had to pray to God when you were on the sea to get, guide you in the right direction. And one or two ships got lost and ended up in places like America because they, had, they got lost in a storm. Okay? Uh, they, they, they weren't allowed to use this technology. So uh, it's part of the explanation for why Britain was able to develop an empire. 
Okay, so yes, certainly they had uh, compasses and other navigational aids. And again, yes, they had the printing press. Uh, the first printed book was published in Germany by Johann Gutenberg, the Gutenberg Press, very, very famous, revolutionized Europe uh, and changed the whole culture. We will see that many things, like the uh, changing of the church, the split between Protestant and Catholic, in many ways goes back to this. People could read the Bible themselves. Before that, all books were written by hand, and all books were very expensive. Most people couldn't read or write. Uh, the printing press changed things. It made literature open and available to ordinary people for the first time. And in England, uh, Caxton's press uh, was introduced in 1476. So about 20 years after it had appeared in Germany. Okay. And no, no electric lights. Uh, in the 18th century, they were trying, but they didn't really succeed in making an electric light bulb until uh, 1875. In Shakespeare's time, they would have used oil and candle wax. They wouldn't even have been using gas. There was a time um, in the 18th century when they, they started using gas, gas lighting. 18th, 19th centuries, gas lighting was used. You know, still in some old houses, uh, I was in um, um, Nomia a few years ago in England, and there was an electrical cut, a short you know, a power cut, and they turned on the gas. We've still got it. <laughs> so, you know, it's still, it's still, um, you can still see that in some places, the old gas lighting. But uh, they didn't even have the gas lighting in Shakespeare's time. It would have been candles and oil. Uh, things like this. Okay. I think something like that, well, both of those would be quite familiar in Japan as well at that time. Okay. And the next one, well, I, difficult to say. The, the first newspaper, I say no, basically, because uh, the first newspapers were published in Germany during Shakespeare's lifetime, but not in England at that time. Um, one of the reasons for that was because printing was controlled very strictly by the, the government at that time. And uh, the first newspaper was, was published... Uh, in 1620, and I think I'm correct in saying it was published in Holland, and imported into England because of the strict law. Okay. But anyway, that was after Shakespeare had died, so he never had a chance to read a newspaper. And those first newspapers were more or less like a sheet of paper. The idea of a newspaper in the way that we, we came to experience where you turn different pages and so on, that didn't really come in until the late 17th century. This is an example, the London Gazette uh, from 1668. Okay, So, uh, no, not really. Shakespeare was before the age of newspapers. We'll talk about how they did, how did they spread ideas? What did they do to get the news out? Uh, we'll talk about that later on. But uh, they didn't use newspapers. And the next on the list, yes, there was tobacco. It had been brought by Sir Walter Raleigh in 1578 from America. Okay. He brought back tobacco. Other things that were brought back at around the same time? Potato. Imagine before that, Hindi has to say, never ate a potato. Okay? Can you imagine English people with no potatoes? It's extraordinary. What did they do? I can't imagine how they, how they managed to get enough to eat, you know, with no potatoes. 
because potato is an important part of their diet, but no potatoes. So yes, potatoes were introduced at about the same time as, as tobacco. And continuing, well, yes, but I'm not sure. I mean, technically, yes. Uh, tea was first mentioned in 1615. So that was one year before Shakespeare died. So it's just possible that he drank tea. But it was a very new thing. Uh, just before he died, it was a very new thing. He probably didn't. But technically, he could have done. Right? There was tea in England uh, in 1615, and he died in 1616. All right? Um, again, it's something like we think it's so basic. English people, tea. You know, but in Shakespeare's time, no, they didn't have it yet. All right, so tea drinking actually didn't become popular in England until the late 17th century. The wife of King Charles II made it popular in the late 17th century. So it existed in England, but it wasn't really drunk by lots of people until uh, much later on, long after Shakespeare had died. Okay. in the late 17th century. And, yeah, clocks. They had clocks. Here's an ancient mechanical clock that's still working. Okay, it's outside a church building here. Difficult. I don't quite know how to read the time on it. We've got one, two, three. I think that's the hours. And this inside one, I think that's the minutes. I'm not quite sure, though. Be honest, because it, it only goes. No, it's really I'll cut in between. So, uh, well, that goes up to twelve, and that goes up to twelve. So I guess that's the morning, and that's the afternoon. But mm -hmm, yeah, that goes up to thirty here. So I was thirty half a minute or something, or I don't know. <laughs> All right, I don't. I'm not quite sure how it worked. Oh, yeah, now maybe these are the hours, and these are, ah, they're, they're, that's the way it would be, isn't it? This would be the hour, the hour, and this would be the, 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 the minutes up to half an hour. And then it would go to minutes after and minutes before. Okay? Well, you know, like we say, 20 to 7, instead of, we could say 6.40, but there, it would be 20 to 7. So this would be showing 20, and that would be showing 7. Something like that. <laughs> and uh, Yeah, th this one is actually, it's as old as the 14th century, this clock. So, yeah, they, they had clocks. So, yeah, this is a time when there were no bicycles, no typewriters, no electricity. People walked, they used horses, they wrote with feather pens, they used oil and candle wax for lighting. But they did have the compass for exploration and navigation. They had clocks to tell the time with, and they had guns. They had printed books, and newspapers appeared during this period, although a little bit after Shakespeare's time. Goods like tobacco, potatoes, and tea were being introduced from America and Asia. So those are the kinds of things that will give you a little bit of a sense of life in those days. People couldn't just turn on the the light. Uh, they had to light a candle. Um, but they could read a printed book. That sort of thing. And I think it, it's important to think about what life was like for people. Because a lot, a lot of the time, history is like kings and queens and battles and fighting. And, you know, but life, history is about people. Okay? I'm, I'm going to teach you about the kings and the queens and the battles. But I don't want us to forget that history is about ordinary people living ordinary lives and trying to get a, an Im, uh, trying to be trying to imagine what what the, that life might have been like living in those days when they had no bicycles and life was very different from now. <laughs>